just like with KB Lake before, we'll probably be talking about Ryzen and Zen for the next few weeks, on and off at least, because there's a lot of information to work through and we've only just begun to really get to the surface of what will eventually be out there for AM4, its chipsets, and the Ryzen CPU and any other CPUs that would follow. For today, we're focusing on the chipsets. So we'll be talking about AM4 and its X370, B350, A320, X300, and AB300 chipsets. Pretty basic at a top level, but before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by CyberPower and their CyberXL gaming PC, which at CES we saw one with a Ryzen logo on the side of it. You can learn more in the link in the description below. Before getting to the chipsets, we need to cover some of the basics with the CPU. Here's a graphic that we made to better illustrate the blocked layout of Ryzen. The current Ryzen CPU as we know it will host a total of 16 PCIe Gen 3 lanes, and that's what's available for your graphics devices. Another set of four PCIe lanes will go straight to the chipset, which are then divvied out to general purpose PCIe Gen 2 or to USB 3.1 and USB 2.0. The CPU also hosts capacity to fuel four USB 3.1 Gen 1 lanes, including options to peel those off for SD and external devices. Further, the CPU can either choose A, B, or C in our graphic, and that'd be either two SATA plus one by two NVMe slot, two SATA plus one by two general purpose PCIe set of lanes, or one by four NVMe set of lanes. It's one of the three, you can't have multiples. Multi-GPU support is possible through two by eight PCIe lanes that come off of the CPU, so those would all be Gen 3 at this point. And you could also do some muxing as we saw with some of the X370 boards at CES last week. That would include MSI's Titanium X Power Board, which uses a set of muxer chips to uh, somehow better enable multi-GPU. We'll have to actually test it to see how it works, of course, as always. But the idea is that X370 supports multi-GPU. You run by 8 and by 8 for the two slots. And most of the slots are electrically wired for by 16 by 8 and by 4 depending on which boards you're looking at. B350 will not support multi-GPU. AMD just doesn't see it as a reasonable device to support because they figure anyone with two or more video cards is probably going to be on a higher end motherboard. And I can't say that I argue too much with that. Uh, of course, it's always nice to have the option, but they're just supporting X370 for multi-GPU for now. And that does kind of make sense. The overclocking potential, it's available on X370 and B350. There might be some caveats there we'll explore later. X300 also has overclocking abilities. We'll talk about that in a moment. A320 and A300 and, or AB300 as they're calling it will not be overclocking ready. So B350, yes, X370, yes, X300, yes and then everything else, no overclocking. There are two core chipsets to AM4 for our audience. X370 and B350 will be the main ones that deserve immediate focus. X370 can be thought of somewhat as comparable to the previous 990FX line or to the current Z series of Intel chipsets in terms of its market positioning. The chipset immediately differentiates itself from B350 by enabling 2x8 multi-GPU support, but should theoretically retain the same level of overclocking as B350. Because the CPU itself contains so much of the I.O. now, effectively SOC in status, the chipset doesn't really do much other than add a few more lanes, and it's really just a few. X370 offers eight PCIe Gen 2 lanes, where B350 runs six PCIe Gen 2 lanes, so two fewer. And X370 also has an additional four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, which are effectively USB 3.0 with a few changes and should generally run wiring to PCIe devices that consist of, again, by 16 by 8 and by 4 where three slots are present. As for SATA Express, these lanes are more meant for use as either two SATA 3 ports or two PCIe Gen 3 lanes, general purpose mostly, because actual SATA Express isn't really expected to be used. No one buys SSDs that use SATA Express at this point. As for overclocking, again, it should be the same on both platforms from what we're told, but AMD's marketing sheet does have an extra really tiny footnote on the X370 with overclocking, and that note would seem to indicate that better thermal solutions are required for X370 overclocking as opposed to B350. The main reason I would think something like that would happen would be if additional options were enabled on X370 that might not be elsewhere, which could potentially drive up the heat, but we'll have to actually see the boards or the chipsets to understand if there's anything to that other than just someone slipped up and forgot to apply the, the footnote to both devices. As for X300, 
That's an incredibly small chipset. It allows for higher end Ryzen CPUs to do what they're meant to do, which would be multi GPU if you wanted to, they run at full tilt, they're overclocked, well, all that stuff. But X300 is meant for use in many ITX systems. It's an SFF chipset. And in size, it's about the size of a pinky nail from what we're told. So it's pretty damn small. That, has, that means two things. One, it doesn't really do any IO. The only purpose of that chipset, other than to just enable Ryzen to do what it can natively do, is to allow secure boot. Other than that, there's not a whole lot going on. It's all the IO is handled through the CPU. But the X300 version does allow unlocked overclocking where the AB300 solutions do not. And it also kind of oddly allows for multi-GPU, which is basically totally irrelevant because no mini ITX motherboard is going to support two PCIe uh, full length slots for GPUs. But it's still allowed. So I guess if you put an X300 chipset on micro ATX for some reason, then you could still do multi-GPU. That said, the, sub, the smaller form factor and position of the X300 chipset does mean that in theory, this frees up some space on the motherboard. So either uh, some SIs or system builders could go do some kind of proprietary small form factor motherboard and cut off maybe an inch or two squared of space, or they could just fit another M.2 device onto the motherboard or more SATA or something like that because the chipset will not take up much space. Even stuff like more USB 2.0 headers, which is always really something I want on many ITX boards and is never there. So that's potentially good for AMD to have that smaller SFF targeted chipset. We haven't seen any in person yet. They didn't have any at CES alongside the micro ATX and ATX boards, uh, but that's the basics for it. So I, I think that pretty much covers it. AB300 are the lower end SFF SKUs, no overclocking, no multi GPU support, although mostly irrelevant anyway. And that is about everything we have. So uh, chipsets for AM4 are going to be pretty simple compared to what we've seen previously. The CPU largely will dictate what you can do with your motherboard and system as a whole because it's handling so much of the I.O. now. That would include, again, USB, PCIe for the video card with no PCIe 3 lanes as fallback in the chipset. None at all. All the PCIe 3 lanes in the chipset, uh, there's about four being sent to it from the CPU, and then those are divvied up among other I.O. devices. So you're getting your graphics from the CPU, 16 lanes there. And that means you can split it into two by eight. Uh, so it's really quite simple this time. Just more than previously, pay attention to the CPU you're buying because this idea of I'll buy a good motherboard now, upgrade later and retain all the same support isn't gonna work quite the same way as it has in the past. So buy a CPU that will support out of box everything you want in terms of IO. And then the chipset will do a little bit for you, but not a whole lot. Thank you for watching. That's all we have for you for right now. Check the channel for motherboard coverage, gamersnexus.net for additional coverage from CES that did not make it to the YouTube channel. Subscribe for more Patreon link in the post-roll video to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.